I came across a project where Power BI report creators needed to track how many users were exporting data from Power BI to Excel. The main objective was to ensure that those relying on data extracts could be upscaled on different Power BI features that allowed them to stay within a live report while also gathering valuable feedback on what's missing from the report. In other words, the end goal was to understand why users export static data and use that insight to improve the reports that analysts spend time creating. Doing all of this without access to any admin functionalities, whether Office 365 or Power BI admin, made things a little bit trickier. But stick around and I show you a solution that works even if you don't have admin rights in your organization. Hello and welcome to Bilingual Analytics. My name is Roland and I'm here to guide you through the world of data, analytics and automation. If this is your first time around here, please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons so you won't miss any of my tutorials. It means a lot to me and helps others to find content like this. So the complexity of this project was twofold. First, I had to find a way for report users to extract data while maintaining a similar experience to hitting one of the most feared buttons in Power BI. Yes, this one. But it's not just about exporting data, it's about exporting relevant data. That means only including the fields that make sense for the users. Similar to how we can personalize visuals before exporting to Excel if this feature is enabled for you. Second, I had to ensure that when a data extract happens, there's a way to track who exported the data and when. So I could set up a dedicated tracker. Hold on, and I should also mention the biggest hurdle. This project relied on an E5 license with report creators having no access to activity logs. The good news, we can do all of this and more by integrating Power Automate with Power BI. A quick note before we jump in. This particular project did not require compliance with legal guidelines on usernames and data retention, such as GDPR, which made things easier. However, I reckon with some additional smarts built into the flow, like auto-deletion of old records, you could make it compliant with those policies. Now, let's head over to my machine and look at our setup in Power BI. Here's a Power BI report with a dedicated page for data extracts using a matrix. Other pages focus on data visualization with clear messaging about which page answers which questions. But this page is specifically designed to allow users to export data. I believe having a page like this is a good practice, especially in organizations where data visualization is still a new concept. So first, let's ensure we have a flexible matrix that allows users to pick and choose what they want to include in their analysis. Even though our focus is exporting to Excel, I still want this matrix to be useful within Power BI. For that, I will need two field parameters. A date-related field parameter, which includes year, quarter, month, and date. This will go into the columns of the matrix. And an attribute field parameter, which includes all other non-date-related dimensions we want to surface for report users. For this demo, I will pick channel name, customer type, customer name, state, and from the product table, I'll add product category, product subcategory, size, and product name. With this done, I can add the attribute field parameter to the rows of our matrix. Technically, I could create a third field parameter for measures, but for now, I just add total sales and total quantity as two measures. Great! Now let's quickly test the matrix to ensure everything works as expected. I select year and month from the date slicer, then I choose channel name, customer type, and product category from the attribute. By expanding the elements in the matrix, I can confirm it's working as expected. Step one is complete. We have a flexible matrix that allows users to select the data they need. As I mentioned earlier, this is similar to a personalized visual experience, but users don't need to remember to click the personalized button and find the right fields. Before we move on to step two, the export button, let's format the matrix to make it visually appealing. Start by changing the background and the visual border color to light gray. 
Then under layout settings, change the style to alternating rows and select the layout you like. I'll keep it on compact layout. Now let's format the field parameter slicers. This is up to personal preference and should align with the overall report design. So yours might look different than mine, but that's completely fine. If you come up with some great formatting options, share it on social media and tag me. I would love to see it. First of all, change the visualization type to the new tile slicer. For my design, I'm going to use a rounded rectangle shape with 15 pixel rounding on the left corners. Use a grid layout with card style. Change the maximum rows to nine and the columns to one. I will also customize spacing set to three and seven pixels. Now let's adjust call out values, images and buttons. Since they have different states, I prefer tweaking them all at once. Let's start with the default state. For the call out values, I don't really need to change anything. Images. Use a checkbox measure as the field. Change the image fit type to fit. Set 100% transparency, position to the left, and image size to 10%. Buttons. Increase the left padding to 10 pixels. Turn off the border. Set the fill color to gray with 50% transparency and enable the accent bar with 100% transparency and four pixel width. Great, over to the hover state. For the call out values, change the color to yellow. Images, keep the 100% transparency and buttons, change the fill color to black with 0% transparency. Let's see how it looks. Lastly, selected state. For the collat values, change the font color to black. For images, reduce transparency to 0%. And for the buttons, fill with gray, 0% transparency, and 4 pixel accent bar on the left. And as always, there's something that I forget, so let's just change the default image fit to normal and disable the ignore padding option. Maybe add one more formatting piece. Call out values font should increase to 14 for the press state. It will look even better. I will repeat this process for the date related slicer with some minor adjustments as this slicer is going to be placed on the top of the matrix. If you prefer a simple design, stick with the default values or go all out and create something even more visually appealing. I'm happy with this look. Now let's work on the export function. I'll start by adding an Excel logo. What a beauty. And now the magic button for exporting and tracking. Well, technically it's a power automate visual. First thing first, let's add the fields we want to include in the export. For that, I just add the two field parameters along with the cells and quantity measures. Yes, that's right. The Power Automate button allows us to use a field parameter, just like the matrix. That means I don't have to hard code any fields or values. Whatever selection the user makes will appear in the extract as well. How good is that? Now, back to Power BI and Power Automate to set up the automation. I click on the three dots in the top right corner of the Power Automate visual and select Edit. This opens the Power Automate interface where I can create a new flow by clicking the New Flow button at the top left corner. I need an Instant Cloud flow which triggers when the button is clicked. The trigger, a button click, is already set up for us, so now I can focus on the first part of the automation, the export process. To do this, I will add the new step and search for the Create CSV table action. Use dynamic content, specifically the Power BI data content, to format the extracted data in a table structure. 
Next, I want to send the CSV file via email, so I search for the Office 365 Outlook connector and select Send Email Version 2. Set the recipient as the user who clicked the button. To do that, I click Add Dynamic Content and select User Email. For the subject line, I create something unique. Using the username and timestamp from the button click trigger and adding data extract at the end. Add the friendly message in the email body. Attach the CSV file under Advanced Options. Set the attachment name as user email underscore timestamp dot CSV. Don't forget to add the dot CSV at the end. For the attachment content, select the output of the create CSV table action. Just like that. With this, we've got a working data extraction solution. But since we are already in Power Automate, let's also set up the tracking component. It's easier than you might think. We can stay within the no-code realm of Power Automate and use the existing setup to track export activity. So back to my machine. For the tracking process, I create a parallel branch immediately after the Power BI button click trigger. I search for the Excel Online connector and select Add a row into a table. Now switch over to Microsoft Edge to show you the Excel file I've set up. It's a simple table with three columns, username, user email, and timestamp. That's all I need. The goal is to track how often users extract data, not what they extract. I don't care about the specific fields or volume of data users export. I just want to know who, when, and most importantly, how often they move data out of Power BI. This allows me, as a report creator, to reach out to heavy users and gather feedback. From my experience, users export data for one of the two reasons. One, they are more comfortable working in Excel. Two, they are not aware of all the functionalities in the report. These conversations often provide valuable insights into how to improve the report or what features should be added next. But I digress. Now I will select the location the document library, the Excel file itself, and the table. Map the dynamic fields from the button click trigger to the corresponding columns in the Excel table. With that, we've completed everything we plan to set up. I save the automation and apply it to the Power Automate button in Power BI. Now, let's refine the button itself. Change the default text to export, then change the hover state text to Excel. Then adjust the fill color to a darker green just slightly darker than the Excel logo. I reckon this looks good. I group the Excel logo and the Power Automate button and enable Maintain Layer Order. With that, I can publish the report and run a test using my own account before sharing the automation. All right, everything seems to be working fine. The last step is to allow other users to run this automation. To do this, I'll open up the Power Automate interface in Power BI again. Under the flow, edit the run only users section. Here we can add individual users or complete entry groups. For testing, I'll add Bill. And now I just need to save the automation. And for the last step, a final test, I'll log in under Bill's account.
All right, I think it's ready for production. That was a fun little project, and I think the outcome is pretty solid. Users can still export data when they need to, but the experience is much more streamlined, allowing them to pick and choose only the fields they require. And don't forget, this Power Automate button gives report creators the ability to track export frequency even without admin privileges. That's two birds with one stone. And with that, we've covered everything planned for this demo. If you have any questions or comments, drop them in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them quickly. Thanks for staying till the end. I hope you learned something new today. If you did, make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Also, check out these tutorials to take your data analytics and automation journey to the next level. Until the next time, see ya!